Hi everybody, welcome to 3.30 in Jen's Kitchen. <laughs> so I cannot um, tell you that I won't hear a dog barking or a kid come running through the door, but <laughs> we're gonna go for it and see what we can do. So today I'm making for you a creamy chicken, broccoli, and sun-dried tomato orzotto. Now the reason that we choose to do orzo instead of risotto is because risotto takes a really long time. You have to stir in a ton of broth or wine and cook your rice and cook it down and pour in more, cook it down and pour in more and so on and so forth. So orzo is actually a pasta and it's really easy and quick to cook. As a matter of fact, it just comes in like a little blue box. Let me show you real quick. Right, so um, orzo again. It's like a um, it's like a rice, but it's a pasta, so it cooks twice as fast. So risotto takes a good 35, 40 minutes or so to cook, whereas orzo only takes about 14. All right, so I have some things pre-done, but I'm going to walk you through each step. So the first thing we have to do is chop up our onion. All right, so come on over, Mel. So first of all, you can see I already have the onion peeled and ready to go with the ends cut off. And I just did that with the five inch uh, knife. I love the Grantsons in this. Um, those will allow you to aerate as you slice so that if you're sl uh, chopping something sticky or starchy like a potato, the blade can go right through. So we have it prepped and ready to go in our veggie wedger. So I know you see me use this guy all the time, the quick slice, and we're actually gonna be using him again. The veggie wedger and him are like kissing cousins, all right? So if I wanted to um, do the fajitas like I teach or taught you a few weeks ago, how to do those in the rock crock, you would have to veggie wedge your onion before you could quick slice your onion, okay? So in this case, we have our uh, vegetable here, which is our onion, all wedged up, ready to go. So you could use this on um, onions, you could use it on, if you used a potato, you could put it lengthways and make steak fries, or you can turn it sideways and make wedges. Now I know for our mom's group that I mentor all the time, I make the roasted potato wedges all the time and they love me because I bring them, um, but I just use a smaller yellow potato or a red potato and just want to wedge them up. If you want them to crisp up really nice, then like I showed you a few weeks ago on making french fries, you just want to put them into salt water. At least five minutes, five to 10, really to pull out all those starches, they'll help them get crispy. So you get all the wedges, pour them in a gallon baggie, drizzle them with some of our garlic oil, or if you don't have that, some olive oil, and some seasonings. I like to use my garlic and herb rub and our three onion rub. Those are my two favorite. You just shake them up, pour them out on a stone, 425 degrees for about 35 minutes and you have beautiful roasted potatoes. So uh, potatoes, um, you could also use this on limes for lime wedges or um, any type of kiwi or mushroom or large strawberry. It will just slice it right up. Because the blade is serrated, it will allow you to slice through things that have a skin like a tomato and not smush it. All right, so we have our onion and I'm just gonna take my knife real quick. And you notice I'm choking up on the blade. Anytime you're using your five inch Sansuko or your eight inch chef's knife and you're using it on a vegetable on a cutting board, you always want to pinch and wrap around the blade. It makes it perfectly balanced in your hand. You can also use the piercing tip if we wanted to and we can make paper thin slices. All right, um, if your knife skills are not where they should be, let me know. I would love to teach you some knife skills, you and your friends. All right, so we have this all on our um, little flexible mat. These actually come in a three pack. So you can see here we have the yellow one and it shows you julienne, fine julienne, large dice, medium dice, small dice, and gives you a measurement here on the bottom. The pink one, or tangerine color, he shows portion control. And then underneath that big pile of cheese is every type of knife that we have in our color coded light and what they're used for. All right, so ready for some noise? This is gonna be loud, all right? You just wanna position your fingers. These are actually finger guards, so if you're a lefty, you put these two fingers here and here, and then you're gonna use the palm of your hand to chop. If you're a righty, you put them here and chop. All right, so I always tell people you chop by how bad a day you're having. Pretty good day, coarsely chop. Little worse day, little more chop. Really bad day onion soup, all right? So the more you chop, the more it chops. So the great thing about the food chopper is every time you depress the handle, those six blades slightly rotate, all right? And so that's what's doing the pump action underneath. So you can dice up pretty much any kind of vegetable or nut 
potato, cookie, cracker, nut, crouton, it really doesn't matter. All right, so I want to teach you a little secret too. Because sometimes you can use the base to chop in, and that's where you would chop like your nuts and things. So you could chop, chop, chop your nuts, and then you could sprinkle them out on top of your dish. So you can use the base to chop soft stuff like black olives, or uh, peanuts, or cookies, or something like that, and be able to sprinkle them right out. I know, I love to chop up Oreo cookies to make Oreo balls at Christmas time. All right, so the food chopper does have a five-year guarantee. Comes apart really easy for cleaning, dishwasher safe top rack, and flares out, so you can clean it real easy. All right, so because this is a flexible mat, all right, all we have to do is coil it up and dump it right in. Now, I already have in my rock crock, which is the Dutch oven size, I already have about two tablespoons of, excuse me, two teaspoons of oil. I highly suggest our garlic oil. The garlic oil has a really nice flavor to it and just adds a little something something to the dish. All right, so to the rock crock, we're going to also add three pressed garlic. So this is just garlic from a garlic clove. And we're just gonna give it a squeeze, <laughs> take out the hair, <laughs> and then we're just gonna choose scrape it off. Insides the skin, and you can just chuck it in the trash. All right, so again, pop it in there. You don't have to peel the garlic, you can just give it a squeeze. This is what I call Barbie's hairbrush, and then you throw it in the trash. One more time for the slow folks. <laughs> All right, and that's how you do your garlic. Now, if garlic gets stuck in there, you can just use the Barbie's hairbrush to poke it out and then pull out the skin really easy. Then it just goes back into the handle for storage and stores in your stainless steel tournament. All right, did you see how I just pulled in another product right there? Mm-hmm, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I'm almost shaking her head. All right, so we're just gonna give this a nice toss in the oil. So this is just garlic and onion. It's just gonna go into the microwave in the rock crock for uh, two minutes. You just want it to soften a little. So rock crock, all right, is freezer safe, fridge safe, dishwasher safe, microwave safe, stovetop safe, oven safe, broiler safe, grill safe up to 752 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? And the uh, medium, the two medium sizes will go into the slow cooker. All right, so I actually I have in here right now um, some chicken, I forgot it was on, it's really hot. Um, I had some chicken I cooked up in the microwave, so ta-da! Look at all that. So I just nuked the chicken for 13 minutes and then I shredded it with my salad choppers, these guys here, which you'll be seeing here in a moment. And then um, after I shredded it up, I added in some barbecue sauce. I did season it when I was cooking it with some of our smoky barbecue, smoky apple wood rub today. So then shredded it up and then I just have it in the slow cooker on warm because we have life groups starting a little bit and we're having um, barbecue chicken sandwiches. All right, so while that is cooking in the microwave, we're gonna get, start getting our chicken prepared. All right, so chicken these days, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I was telling the girls, um, you know, you could probably go whitewater rafting on this guy. So this is our spring-loaded closing cut. So you just shove your chicken inside with your chef's tongs there, using our chef's knife, slice, and then saw back and forth. Notice how the blade is going from side to side. You need at least a seven inch blade in order to do that, and our eight inch chef's knife is really perfect for it. It cuts through everything like it's hot butter, all right? So check that out. Just like that, now we have two normal sized chicken breasts instead of one large chicken breast, all right? So let's do it one more time. So we have two chicken breasts in this recipe. I love it when chicken's on sale, can go and you can grab some and you can slice all of it up and then I like to um, store the chicken in freezer bags um, individually so that whenever I get it out they thaw faster and then I don't need um, maybe sometimes I don't need a whole bunch of chicken breasts I only need a few so this also can be used grab him this also can be used um, to do cherry tomatoes or grapes if you're concerned about your kiddos eating grapes and choking on them just cut them all in half okay you lay all your grapes in there at once and you can cut them all at once in half 
You can also do that with cherry tomatoes. You can also uh, cut in half um, mozzarella cheese balls. Um, you can also do bagels. If I wanted to, I could cut my chicken halfway, then come back out and um, and then uh, fillet it up or have it um, butterfly it, and then you could shove in um, Parmesan cheese, sun-dried tomatoes, some spinach, and then coil it back up, wrap it in bacon, and then pan fry it. So I'm sure that would go over pretty well in our house, wouldn't it, Beck? Or Mel, whatever your name is. She's giving me the thumbs up. All right, so we've got our chicken sliced in half. All right, and we're just going to brush it with a little bit of oil. And while we're doing that, we're gonna get our new pan hot. All right, so here's our chicken. And we have it on our large groove cutting board because that groove will keep any chicken juice from dripping all over my countertop. Okay, that large groove will actually hold up to three quarter cup of liquid, which will um, help really help you out if you're ever chopping things like uh, pineapple or tomatoes or watermelon when you don't have drip, drip, drip on your foot, foot, foot. <laughs> Everything will get trapped in the outside. So we're just gonna heat up our stainless pan. This is our stainless non-stick pan. Um, the stainless non-stick has just changed everything about the way I'm able to cook. I always loved stainless, but I hated the thought of having to use so much oil in order to make things not stick. So with our stainless non-stick, um, we're just gonna start heating up our pan. You can see here that the grid is embedded. So the stainless is there, but the non-stick is there. So all we're gonna have to do is brush a little oil on our chicken and it will be able to flip it over, no problem. So I'm just gonna get him ready while I'm doing that. The chicken's gonna chill for a moment. So we have our onions and our garlic already cooked up. We're gonna add a couple more ingredients. Now this wasn't hot because it was only in there for two minutes, but when it comes out the next time, it's definitely gonna be hot. So come on over, Mel. We have three quarter cup, or three and a quarter cup, excuse me, of chicken broth here. So you can see it's just measured up. These are our easy read measure cups. They come in one cup, two cups, four cups, okay? So we're gonna put in three and one quarter cup into our rock crock, and then we need some wine. Now, we're gonna be using today a Chardonnay. Chardonnay is a nice dry white, and if you go to Aldi, you can get Winking Owl, and it's less than $3. We don't really care how expensive it tastes right now, um, because we're not drinking, drinking it. We're just going to use it to flavor the chicken a little bit and flavor our dish. So this is our electric wine bottle opener. This is pretty cool. Um, while it's charging, it's blue, and it just plugs right into any socket, unless you're desperate, and then it has a USB port. <laughs> All right, so I'm not advocating drinking and driving, but I am advocating charging your wine bottle opener on the way to your party, if you so desire. So we'll set him aside. Now, the pedestal of the Da, 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 of our um, electric wine bottle opener also doubles as a, as a paper cutter. So as you can see there, all we have to do is put it on top and then rotate the bottle. All right, took off the paper perfectly. Then we're just gonna push the down button. All right, so push the down button. It's just gonna go down into the bottle, pull out the cork, push the up button, and the cork will come right back out. All right, so, so easy to open up your wine bottle opener, or open up your bottles of wine. And one um, charge, one full charge, will open up 60 bottles of wine. All right, so we need, so come on over, Mel, on this side, we need three quarter cup of wine to go in this dish. All right, and notice I don't have to do squats in order to measure. And then we need one cup of wine to deglaze the pan here in a bit. All right, so there we go. Now we do have a wine bottle stopper, and we also have an aerator. The aerator, when you have red wine, you need to make sure that it gets aerated before you drink it. So um, the, air, the aerator you can pop in, as it pours, it aerates, so you don't have to wait. All right, so we'll set him aside. So we'll add in our three quarter cup of wine. And then we have one and a half cups of orzo. All right, so these are part of our measure cup set. 
The measure cup set, just all of the pieces snap together. This is all the room that it will take up in your cabinet. And it comes with a leveler. They are clear so you can see through them. And then they're also rounded so it gets scoops easy and then it pours out easy. They really think of everything, even on a measure cup set, all right? So um, they have all the great sizes. And again, this is all the room that they take in order to, um, uh, whenever you're measuring and whenever you're storing. All right, so we'll pop these in the sink. Set these aside. All right, so now that we've got that in there, we're just going to take this first stir. So we have our orzo, we have our broth, we have our white wine, we have our garlic and our onion and a little bit of oil and one little tiny piece of broccoli <laughs> that I just saw. All right, so now it's just gonna go in the microwave for 14 minutes. Again, if this was risotto, we would need much longer. All right. Start. All right, so back to our chicken. So I don't know if you know this, but our uh, basting brush comes apart. So these are uh, silicone. They're never gonna, I always say, you will never have hairy barbecue it's because your boar bristles on your other brush are not gonna get off into your barbecue sauce. This will hang inside of your bowl. So if you're um, basting barbecue or something like that and you don't want it to slide in the bowl, you don't have to worry about that. So we're just going to paint olive oil on either side of our chicken. So this is all it needs on this side, and then we're gonna give it a sprinkle with our garlic and herb rub. This is one of my most favorite, favorite, favorite rubs. I love to mix it with butter for a compound butter for garlic bread, and it goes in almost every single soup and meat dish that I make. The other one I really love is our three onion. So we're just gonna give them a flip. Again, the large groove cutting board, you see how white it is? It just goes back to white. Um, sometimes if you're doing something that's, um, you know, like a carrot or a sweet potato or something like that, um, it will slightly discolor. But um, if you're anti-chemical, just set it out in the sun, it'll take it right back to white. All right, so that is all the oil it needs, folks. And that was our little one cup prep bowls. They are so handy. They come in a six pack. And then we have two cup prep bowls that come in a two pack and three cup prep bowls that come in a three pack. And I actually have the three cup prep rolls that so now I'll show you those next. All right, so if we were doing this on the flexible mat, I wouldn't be able to hold it like this. What you wanna hear when you put your chicken on the pan is shh, all right? That's perfect. So that's gonna help get a nice sear on the chicken. All right. So our nonstick stainless is, are you ready for this? Oven safe up to 450 degrees. It is metal safe. It is dishwasher safe, right? So the cookware just in the other day, um, I made a pineapple upside down cake in my nonstick stainless pan. All right. Oven safe, dishwasher safe, metal safe, nonstick stainless cookware. <laughs> All right. So this Y right here is solid. This handle is hollow. So whenever you're cooking on top of the stove, all of that temperature will get trapped in that Y. All right, so we have this stainless pan, which is gonna conduce heat really effectively. And then that uh, stainless also creates the fawn. Fawn is little pieces that stick in the pan, and that's what you use to make your sauces and your gravies, which in a bit, we're gonna use that white wine and two tablespoons of butter, and we're gonna deglaze our pan, all right? So let's set our timer for four minutes, all right? And while that's cooking, we're gonna keep on. All right, so over here, we have some broccoli that I've been chopping up, all right? So the broccoli, again, is with our quick slice. Now, you guys know, if you've watched anything on my wall, I'm obsessed with my quick slice. I use it on everything, but let's be real, all right? Can we be real for a moment? You really can do everything with a knife and a cutting board, all right? If you have really good knife skills, you could sit here and dice all this up, and you could do it no problem. So I always tell people, if all you need is a knife and a cutting board, then you want my 8-inch chef's knife that I just showed you, my 5-inch Santuco, and the large group cutting board. You really can get away with those three, and then a good skillet and a rock crock, all right? So, but some of these things are just so timely, and they help you get done or done so much faster. So I do, even though I have really good knife skills, I grab the quick slice, like a hundred times a week to slice things up. So it has the tines here that are just slightly stair-stepped, all right? 
<laughs> so that you can slice things up into slices. So like in this case, we have our broccoli. So I'll show you here. So you're just going to line it up and then go back and forth and go like so. If you have a large chunk, all right, you can dump these a little bit and you can do it again, just turn it. So I know you've seen me do peppers. You've seen me do, um, gosh, cucumber, zucchini. I've done parsley with this. I do um, baby potatoes for fried potatoes. I will do, I'll cut my carrots in half, lay them lengthways this way and have carrot slices. Um, I'll do celery on here. I've done parsley on here. You can do mushrooms. You can do a block of cheese for slices. Whole tomatoes for your sandwiches, for your hamburgers and things. You just put the whole tomato on there and slice it right through. The only thing it can't do are things that are really dense, okay? So things that are dense like an onion, too dense. Sweet potato, too dense. If you're doing your potato, uh, last weekend was Mother's Day, I made a big mess of potato salad. So I cut my potatoes in half and then laid the halves on here to make slices and then I boiled the slices. So you just have to cut things that are really dense in half first. Don't try it on a sweet potato. Sweet potato, yes. Sweet potato, no. So we're just gonna come back here and go over our broccoli, all right? And then again, some of these larger chunks, we're gonna come back and lay them this way and do it again, all right? So the quick slice quickly slices for you. All right, now that rock crock that's in the microwave is also a game changer. And rock crock does happen to be on special next month. Oh. So rock crock, um, again, besides being able to go in so many different locations, I have about 60 pages of recipes that I can send you through an e-cookbook for that rock crock. He's gonna make a big difference in your life. Right now I have the uh, small rock crock in my oven with baked beans in it. I have the uh, four quart Dutch oven over there with the chicken in it and another four quart Dutch oven in the microwave. All right, we use the rock crocks like crazy in this house. And the part that I love the most is that it washes up so easy. All right, so in the sink it goes, there's all of our broccoli. All right, now, I also did a jar of sun-dried tomatoes. You can buy them pre-julienne so that you don't have to slice them up. They're very squishy and they're hard to do with your knife. So find them pre-julienne. I find them at Meyer here locally, and then I just drain them out. So a while ago we had that Easy Read measure cup we were measuring the liquids with. This is the Easy Read colander. So as you can see, it still has all the measurements in it, but you also have the holes in it so that you can rinse and strain. Let me show you the trick. You can rinse and strain and it will set. Now, right now it's sitting on top of my um, dish strainer as well. But if it wasn't there, it would go all the way down and you would be able to rinse and drain. So I'll put my cans of black beans there, rinse and drain them all at the same time. So it's just very, very, very convenient and very handy. And I think that sun-dried tomatoes are God's little pieces of candy, <laughs> all right? So, all right, so that's our timer on our chicken. So watch this. Because our, our splatter screen has a hinged center. I don't have to take the whole splatter screen off, let it splatter everywhere to be able to flip my food. I only have to flip half of it. And these are coated in silicone, all right? So look at that great sear we're getting on the underside of our chicken. All right, and we'll close them up. Now we'll do this side, all right? And look, no stickage, no stickage. And that is just amazing that it's non-stick stainless. All right, so let's set the timer for four more minutes. All right, do you see the tongs? If you grab them here, turn them upside down, squeeze them, they unlock, relax. Or you can just push the rivet up. These are coated in silicone too, so super nice. All right, so we got our sun-dried tomatoes. We have our broccoli and our large three cup prep bowl. I just snipped up all of our fresh parsley. You want to use a flat leaf parsley in this recipe. It's Italian flat leaf parsley, not curly parsley, all right? The curly parsley is really more as a garnish than anything. Chock full of all sorts of uh, good nutrients and vitamins for you. Anytime you add dark green leafies to your dish, it's a good thing, all right? So we just snip it right up. If you don't snip up your herbs, you don't release the flavor from the herbs. So snip up your parsley. These guys come apart real easy for cleaning and for sharpening. Uh, these guys will cut through chicken bone. They will cut that bag of Cocoa Krispies or brownie mix that you're trying so hard to open. <laughs> all right, these will just open right up with no washa. All right, so in the sink they go. 
All right, so we have those. Now we've got some cheese, because what would risotto or orzotto be without cheese, right? So we have, I already pre-done some of it. This is our fine grain. So I'm a righty, so I'm just gonna put that last little piece in there and look at that cheese. I just call it like little pillows of parm. When you buy your bag cheese pre-grated, all right, you have choices with this chunk. <laughs> you can eat it, you can give it to the dog, or you can just break it up. <laughs> all right, when you buy your cheese pre-shredded in the bag, they're allowed to have extra ingredients in it. One of those extra ingredients is powdered cellulose added to prevent caking. All right, now I'm not talking about cellulose, all right, it's actually sawdust. So they coat your cheese in sawdust to make it nice and flaky in your bag, all right? So your bar cheese has about four ingredients in it. Your bag cheese has about 10 ingredients in it. Does your bag cheese look like this? Will your bag cheese melt like this? Will your bag cheese taste like this, all right? If the answer to any of those questions was no, <laughs> then you need our microplane fine. Now we also have a course the course you'll use on your mozzarella or your cheddars. All right, the fine grade, I also use it a lot on lime zest. Don't I melt all the time on lime zest, all right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then um, you can also use it on ginger. Um, I made a really awesome salad last month and we used it on ginger the whole time. So you can just use it like so to grate up or you can go all over the top of your pizza or pasta. Hold it by the handle, thumb on the hinge, push up with your thumb, pull down with your hand, and that will go into the three different locations. And then it comes with the case because the blades are sharp. That's why it grates up so fast. All right, cool. and we have a fine grain or coarse grain. All right, in the sink it goes. All right, so we're also gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper to our dish. Um, this is our salt and pepper grinder stand set. So we do sell the two grinders in the stand together. We don't sell it with the salt and pepper that's always sold separately because we don't want you to force you to buy what you don't need. So the salt and the pepper we do sell, pink Himalayan sea salt and the peppercorn uh, grinder or peppercorn medley. Um, but you can get the two graders in the stand as a set. Anytime you see the word set in the Pamper Chef catalog, I want you to think sale because it's always on sale if you buy it in the set. I don't know if you know this, but they're allowed so many bug parts per million in your ground pepper at the store. So anytime you're going like this with your shaker can of pepper, you're getting a little extra protein. All right, so grate your own pepper. If you go to a fancy schmancy restaurant, you've heard me say this before, they never go like this, right? They come out and they go, would you like fresh ground pepper? And you're like, yeah, all right? They never go like this, they always go like this. All right, so there's our chicken. We're just gonna take them out to our stainless pan. Our stainless bowl has a silicone bottom. That keeps it from sliding around as you're using it. And then Mel, come here and show them. See all these little pieces of fond in the bottom of the pan? Those little pieces is where all the yummy yummies are at, all right? That's what you make your gravies and your sauces with. I'm just gonna turn down the heat just a little bit. We added in now one cup of the white wine. And we're gonna add in two tablespoons of butter. And I really do prefer butter in this recipe, not margarine, all right? Now, what I want you to see is look at this, all right? Do you see what's happening to all those pieces? They're all coming up off the bottom of the pan, all right? Now, you wouldn't want to serve this right away. You definitely want it to cook down because you want to cook out all of the alcohol. Otherwise, this dish would be really bitter. All right, so we're just going to let this um, butter melt and let this sauce go. And look at that. Can you see that? Oh my gosh, like nothing sticks to this pan. It is just amazing. I'm not kidding. This is a game changer. We also have a 10 inch size if the 12 inch is too um, large for your family. Maybe there's only one or two of you in the house. Maybe the 10 inch is more your size. And we only have um, two nonstick stainless pieces in um, the skillet size. We don't offer them in like a saucepan or anything like that. Because really the only time you really need stainless like this is if you're using the skillet. All right, so that's gonna cook up. While that's cooking up, let me see here. We're going to shred up, where my salad choppers go? The chicken. All right, so as you can see here, the stainless bowls have measurement markings on the inside. All right, liters if you're really smart or live in Canada, and then cups for the rest of us. 
There's our pasta. Or we'll stop him for a moment. All right, so we're just going to start shredding up the chicken. All right, so these are salad choppers. Salad choppers allow you the dual scissor action, all right, to just shred things up. When Becca graduated high school, I cooked up 20 pounds of grilled chicken <clears throat> in my double burner grill pan. <clears throat> all right, pause for effect. All right, and then uh, she shredded it all. So it's super easy to cook up and then shred up. Matter of fact, again, this is how I shredded up all of that chicken that's currently in the rock crock behind me with barbecue sauce for our life group in just a few hours. All right, so we're just gonna shred up all this chicken. This, you know, can you imagine trying to do this with two forks or trying to do it with your fingers? You know you've burnt your fingers a million times trying to do this. So we can just shred, 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 shred up our chicken. And then um, it's gonna go take a swim and our wine butter sauce, which is boiling up pretty good over there. All right, so we just wanna cook out all of that wonderful alcohol so that we don't have any alcohol in our dish, but it imparts the flavor. All right, as you can see, this shreds up really fast. So you, I mean, they're called salad choppers, so clearly you could use them on salad, but chicken is what we use them on the most in this house. All right, so I'm just gonna peek and see if there's any big chunks down there hiding. And these are the baby tongs. A while ago we had out the large tongs. So these are baby tongs. Just shred it just a couple more up here. All right, we'll get out the chicken. And then I really, really, really encourage you to get our dual-sided cleaning brush. Like this is our old pink one that I had from Help With Breast Cancer, but that dual-sided cleaning brush We'll get in there and get out all those pieces. So yours will be burgundy color. Mine was pink from Help With Breast Cancer a month, a couple of years ago. But uh, you're really going to enjoy those to clean up your uh, salad choppers. So let me see the sauce to see how he's doing. Just let him cook just a tad bit more. We just want to reduce it down and get all that alcohol out. It's looking pretty good, actually. I think we'll go ahead and we'll have, it, have like one more minute. Look at that. All right, while that's going on, let's grab out our rock crock. So I'm just gonna use my oven mitt as a trivet. Those oven mitts, they're so smart. Because they're silicone on the outside, you never have to worry about steam cooking your fingers. These guys are nice, so if you ever have a bowl of soup that you're trying to get out, you don't have to try and hold it with your fingernails. You know how we do that, we're like, Maybe that's just me. Uh, you can just grab on and hold on to the bowls or hold on to your rock crock or whatever. All right, so inside, get all that. So we just got a uh, risotto facial, <laughs> all right? So we're gonna dump in first a stick of cream cheese, which I had, oh, here it is. Um, and I cubed it up already. All right, so we're gonna stir that in and let that get all melty. Melty is a Jennifer Courtney technical term. So that will start melting up and start getting real creamy. And then we're gonna add in our um, Parmesan cheese, our chicken, which I think, we'll go ahead and put our chicken, let him cook up a little bit. So all that shredded chicken back inside. What I really love about this recipe is it utilizes the stove top and the microwave at the same time. So I call it cheater cooking because you're cooking in two different uh, vessels in two different times. So you can half cook in one and half cook in the other and get it all done much faster. All right, so we'll just let that kind of soak up. You can see here it's soaked up all of that yummy sauce and we're just gonna coat the chicken real good. I'm gonna turn that off and let it sit there just for a moment. All right. So we'll get all of this cream cheese stirred into this risotto. And then we're going to add in all of the parm, all of the chicken, all of the broccoli, the sun-dried tomatoes. And then we're gonna to top it with our fresh parsley. The parsley, you just need that bite, that acid, to kind of balance out all that cream and wine uh, from the dish. All right, so sometimes, I know if you ever watch chop they're always talking about oh we need to balance it you need texture you need this you need that this recipe has it all it has the sweet and the tangy from the tomato it has the bite from the parsley 
It has the crunch from the uh, broccoli because it's not going to cook the broccoli anymore. It's just going to slightly soften while it's inside this dish. All right. That's looking like I got most of it. And then it's got the creaminess of the cream cheese and the parm cheese. So I'm not cooking light and healthy for you today. Sorry, folks. All right. And then we'll add in our chicken. Then we'll add in our broccoli. Look at that pan, Mel. Nothing stuck to it. Isn't that crazy? That's absolutely amazing. All right. And we'll add in our broccoli. Again, since it coils, all we have to do is coil it up and dump it in. All right. And then our tomatoes. And then we need some salt and pepper. All right. That was 10 turns of salt and five turns of pepper. All right. And then we're just gonna stir all this together carefully. The last couple of parties I've thrown chicken on the floor because <laughs> I'm a pampered chef, not a perfect chef. All right. I wish you were here to smell this. If we had smell-o-vision, you'd be in heaven right now. But um, once this is done, you just let it set for about five minutes or so, and that will soften the rest of that broccoli up and really combine all those flavors together. Oh, there's a little piece of cream cheese hiding in there together. All right, folks, that looks like it's all mixed up. And so I made barbecue for um, all my, like I said, my life group getting ready to come over today. But um, now I don't have to cook dinner tomorrow. Yay! So parsley on top. Again, flat leaf parsley, not curly parsley. Curly is normally what you see on your food at the table. All right. And that, my friends, is creamy chicken, broccoli, sun-dried tomato, or Zoto, all right? If you want to get the Rock Crock on special next month, June Hostesses, when your show reaches 650, you're gonna double your free, and you can get this Rock Crock slow cooker combo. This is the same size Rock Crock. Instead of 169, is only 6760. I do have a couple of dates left, if that's something that you're thinking about, and double free, holy smackers. That's a lot, all right? Goodbye from my kitchen. Have a great, great, great night. God bless you, and we'll see you soon.